Good morning. Uh, as you know, the President of Turkey is uh, shortly going to be arriving at the White House. Uh, but prior to his arrival, uh, as I promised, General McMaster is going to give an update on the President's trip that starts this Friday. Uh, and I know there are some additional questions uh, regarding some news of the day. So without further ado, uh, General McMaster. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hey, last week we discussed the President's upcoming trip. I promised I'd come back and go through the schedule in more detail. I'm happy to do that today. And Sean tells me there's another topic you might want to talk about as well. <laughs> so uh, I'm happy to answer any questions about that uh, after we go through the, the schedule here. But first of all, just uh, Secretary Tillerson will accompany the President for most of the trip, breaking off just before the G7 meeting. And as you know, the trip will begin in Saudi Arabia. It's a historic trip. After the, an arrival ceremony in Riyadh, the President will have coffee with King Salman, attend a royal banquet, and hold bilateral meetings with the King, the Crown Prince, and the Deputy Crown Prince. He will also participate in a signing ceremony of several agreements that will fur further solidify U.S.-Saudi security and economic cooperation. That evening, the President and the First Lady will join members of the Saudi royal family for an official dinner. The next day, the President will hold bilateral meetings with Gulf Cooperation Council leaders as well as broader meetings with all the Gulf state leaders. In the afternoon, he will meet and have lunch with leaders of more than 50 Muslim countries, where he will deliver an inspiring yet direct speech on the need to confront radical ideology and his hopes, the President's hopes, for a peaceful vision of Islam to dominate uh, across the world. The speech is intended to unite the broader Muslim world against common enemies of all civilization and to demonstrate America's commitment to our Muslim partners. The President will then participate in the inauguration of a new center 
intended to fight radicalism and promote moderation. By establishing and operating this center, our Muslim friends, including Saudi Arabia, are taking a firm stand against extremism and tho those who use a perverted interpretation of, of religion to advance their criminal and, and political agendas. The President also looks forward to participating in a Twitter forum with young people who will be able to live tweet his remarks to people all over the world. The President will then continue on to Jerusalem where he will meet with President Rivlin and lay a wreath at Yad Vashem. The President will then deliver remarks at the, Israeli at the Israel Museum and celebrate the unique history of Israel and of the Jewish people while reaffirming America's unshakable bond with our closest ally in the Middle East. Later that day, he will meet with Prime Minister Netanyahu. That night, the President and the First Lady will join the Prime Minister and Mrs. Netanyahu for a private dinner. The following morning, the President will meet President Abbas in Bethlehem, where he will convey his administration's eagerness to facilitate an agreement that ends the conflict. And he will urge Palestinian leaders to take steps that will help lead to peace. And he will visit the Church of the Holy Sepulchre and say a prayer at the Western Wall. In Rome the next day, the President will have an audience with the Pope at the Vatican. He looks forward to celebrating the rich contributions of Catholics to America and to the world and to discussing a range of issues of mutual concern, some of which I summarized last time. Before leaving the Vatican, the President will meet uh, the, the Cardinal Secretary of State and will tour St. Peter's. Later that afternoon, the President will meet with the King and the Prime Minister of, of, um, of Belgium uh, and the heads of state and government of the host country to the NATO alliance. Uh, he'll also, though, he'll also though, uh, meet uh, uh, President Mattarella before, departing, uh, before, before parting, uh, departing Rome for Brussels. The next morning, the President will travel to the EU headquarters to meet with the Presidents of the European Union and of the European Council. He'll then hold a, a uh, working lunch with the newly elected President of France, uh, whom he will meet in person for the first time. That afternoon, the President will deliver remarks at the unveiling of NATO's memorial to our shared struggle in front of a piece of the Berlin Wall uh, and a segment of the World Trade Center. He will reaffirm America's commitment to the alliance and repeat his insistence that for the good of the alliance, all members must share responsibility and share burden. Joined by Secretary Mattis, he will participate in the NATO leaders meeting and dinner before then traveling to Sicily for the G7. Throughout the summit, he will meet bilaterally with leaders, including the Italian Prime Minister. In the formal meetings, he will press America's economic agenda and call for greater security cooperation. On the first night of the summit, he will also attend a concert performed by the La Scala Philharmonic Orchestra, followed by a leaders dinner hosted by the President of Italy. Before departing Italy for home, the President will speak to American and allied servicemen and women and their families. He will thank them for their sacrifices they all make to keep us safe. And he'll also recap the highlights and accomplishments of the trip. And so I'll ask Sean to call on, on any of you who have questions. Thanks. Sean. 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 Thanks a lot, General McMaster. Uh, you came out to the stakeout area yesterday, and, uh, and coming out to the stakeout area, you said that the Washington Post story that came out late yesterday afternoon was false. Do you stick by that assertion? Do you think that every element of that story is false, and do you have anything to correct in terms of what you said at the podium yesterday afternoon? No, I, I stand by my statement that I made yesterday. What I'm saying is really the premise of that article is false, that in any way the President had a conversation that was inappropriate or that resulted in any kind of lapse in, na in national security. And so I think the real issue, and, and I think what I'd like to see really debated more, is that our national security has been put at risk by those violating confidentiality and those releasing information uh, to the press that, that, uh, that, could, that could be used, uh, connected with other information available uh, to, to make American citizens and others more vulnerable. General was classified as a major. General was classified as a major. Um, sir, can you tell us if the 
Part of his, I'm sorry. No, I don't, no Israeli leaders will join uh, President Trump to the Western Wall. He's going to the Western Wall mainly in connection with the theme to, to connect with three of the world's great religions and, to, and to, to advance, to pay homage at each of these religious sites that he's visiting, but also to hi highlight the theme that we all have to be united against what are really the enemies of all civilized people and that we have to be joined together in, in a, with an agenda uh, of tolerance and moderation. General, 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 I just want to uh, try to dig into some details of this reporting on the President's conversations with the Russians. Are you denying that he revealed information that was given to the U.S. by an intelligence partner? So uh, what, I, what we don't do is discuss what is and what it wasn't classified. What I will tell you is in the context of that, that, uh, that discussion, what the President discussed with the Foreign Minister was wholly appropriate to that conversation and is consistent with the routine sharing of information between the president and, and any leaders with whom he's engaged. Well, was it and and the US received from an intelligence partner? I, I'm not going to be the one to confirm the, the confirm uh, that that sort of information that could that could jeopardize it could jeopardize our security. Yeah, US allies that do have these type of intelligence sharing relationships with the US will stop providing that information? No, I'm not concerned at all. The, that, that conversation was wholly appropriate to the conversation. And I think wholly appropriate what the expectations are of our intelligence partners. Oh, um, if I can follow on that, uh, General, have you reached out to foreign partners who might have contributed such information to the U.S. and talked to them about it, tried to reassure them? What, if so, what was the reaction? I, I have not, and I'm not sure what conversations have been held about that. Carol. 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 If the, if, going back to what you were saying earlier, if there was nothing that the President shared that he shouldn't have shared, why did the national, his uh, counterterrorism advisor contact the NSA and the CIA about what he had said? You know, I, I, would, I would say maybe from an overabundance of caution, but I'm not sure. I mean, I, I'm not, I've not talked to, uh, uh, to, to Mr. Bossert about, about that, about why he, why he reached out. But you were there, so what, what, probably I, you would understand why there was yeah, a reason sure. to reach out. Sure, I, I, I was in the room. The Secretary of State was in the room, as you know. The Deputy Assistant, uh, uh, the uh, Deputy Advisor uh, for National Security, uh, Dina Powell for Strategy, uh, was in the room. And, and none of us felt in any way that that conversation was inappropriate. General, General, Thanks, Sean. General, can you tell us, when was the decision made to share that information with the Russians? Did the President spontaneously on the spot decide to give that information over? Or was there an interagency process or some kind of formal decision-making process in advance of that meeting with the Russians last week? Well, as you know, the, the President, it's wholly appropriate for the President to share whatever information he thinks is necessary to advance the security of the American people. That's what he did. As to your question on had that information been shared previously, I'm not sure about that. When did you make that decision, though, sir? When did he make the decision? When did he make the decision to share the information? He made the decision in the context of, of, the, of the conversation, which was wholly appropriate. So let's just, I think, what, what, I think it's worth recapping one thing here. The president was meeting uh, with, uh, with the foreign minister about, about the terrorist threat. He had also raised some difficult issues, what, he, what we expected in terms of different behavior from Russia in, in key areas like, uh, like, uh, like Ukraine and, and as in Syria. But then the president was emphasizing, hey, we have some common interests here. We have to work together in some critical areas. We have an area, we have a, an area of cooperation with transnational terrorist organizations, ISIS in particular, an organization that had already taken down a Russian airliner and murdered over 200 people in October of 2015. And so, so, so this was the, 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 the context of the conversation in which it was wholly appropriate to share what the threat was as a basis for common action and coordination. And cooperation in the moment, then, during the context of that conversation. Excuse me. Um, I want to follow up first with Jennifer's question, which you didn't answer about the Western Wall being part of Israel. Oh, that's uh, that's that sounds like a policy decision for you know, and and and, uh, and that's the president's intention. And, and I, I did answer the question in terms of what his intention is and where do you go with Isra Israeli officials. The president's intention is to visit these religious sites to highlight the need for unity among three of the world's great religions. Unity in confronting a very grave threat to all civilization and unity in embracing an agenda of, of tolerance. General. 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 General.
And that, I mean, the spin is that the president revealed the name of the city, and that gave away information that undermined an ally. Okay, I'll, I'll answer that. Okay, so um, all of you are very familiar with the threat from ISIS. All of you are very familiar with the territory it controls. If you were to say, hey, from where do you think a threat might come from territory that ISIS controls, you would probably be able to name a few cities, I would think. And so it, it, was, it, it, was, it was nothing that you would not know from open source reporting in terms of a source of concern. And, and it, had some, it, ha it had all to do with operations that are already ongoing, have been made public for months. General, I think, sorry, to get back to my question, sir. Um, was this information that was shared with the Russians also the same content that was shared with our allies? And specific to this threat, which the president says was in relation to airlines, is this uh, an imminent threat? Was there a justification for in that moment needing to share it with the Russians? Yeah, I don't want to get into specifics of what exact information is shared with what exact allies, but, but information on this topic of the threat to aviation was shared with multiple allies. And as you know, there are already policies being put in place to protect against that threat. And, and, you, and you and many others have reported widely on this. Something that our allies did not. Is that what you are saying? In, in terms of the specifics, I can't, I can't, I have no basis for comparison on what was shared with what, with what country. But I will tell you that it was our impression of all of us that were in the meetings, I've mentioned already, that, that what was shared was wholly appropriate given the purpose of that conversation and the purpose of, of, uh, of what the President was trying to achieve uh, through that meeting. But there was no imminent threat. Uh, uh, General, um, when you came out after the story broke, you said that the President did not disclose any sources or methods. He did not reveal anything about military operations. Why were you denying things that were not even reported? What the report said is that the President revealed classified information that had been shared by one of our allies in the Middle East. So the question is simply a yes or no question here. Did the President share classified information with the Russians in that meeting? And as I mentioned already, we don't say what's classified, what's not classified. What I will tell you again is that what the President shared was wholly appropriate. The story, the story combined what was leaked with other information and then, and then, and then insinuated about sources and methods. So I wanted to make clear to everybody that the President in no way compromised any sources or methods in the course of this conversation. General, you do say, though, that national security has been put at risk by the leak of this. Uh, do you have any idea how this got out and what steps are you taking by virtue of discovering this, as you did, to uh, try to limit the potential for any more leaks of national security information? I, I think national security is put at risk by, by this leak and by leaks like this. And there are, you know, there are a number of instances where this has occurred. And, uh, and I think it's important to, to investigate these sort of things and, and to make sure that, that we have trusted organizations across our government uh, that, that, that allows for the free sharing of information and collaboration. I mean, in terms of national security, what is critical is that you can, you can assemble the experts you need. You want a bigger group, right, for any of these complex problems because you need their expertise. You need the tools that they bring to bear from different agencies and departments. And so what we really have to do is make sure we have a very high degree of confidence in all of our organizations and all of our systems and processes so we can do what we need to do for the president, which is give him our best advice uh, and give him options to deal with these very complex problems. Clearly, you, you can't have that confidence by virtue of what happened yesterday. So do you have an idea of how this got out and, and how can you tighten up the ship, as it were, right. to ensure, from your perspective at least, that this stuff doesn't get out? Well, I think, I think it's incumbent on all of us to, to bring in the, the people with the right authorities and the right mandate to, to take a look at how this leak occurred and, and how other breaches may have occurred as well. General McMaster. Thank you. Uh, General McMaster, um, I'll put a finer point on it. Is there now an active investigation into how this information was leaked? And can you tell us about who's running that investigation? And I also would like to ask you, given that um, President Trump is now going to be meeting face to face with literally dozens of foreign leaders, if there are sensitivities to his discretion in what sort of information to decide to declassify, um, how is that something that you were advising him ahead of this foreign trip? Yeah. Well, I mean, there, there are no sensitivities in terms of uh, me or anybody who's been with the president in many of these engagements. He shares information in a way that is wholly appropriate. And I should just make, I should just make 
maybe the, the statement here that, that the president wasn't even aware you know, of where this information came from. He wasn't briefed on the source or method of the information either. So uh, I'm sorry, this got to be the last question because we do have the, we do have the President of Turkey coming, I think, momentarily. Thank you very much. Contradict you. We can contradict you, General. We have more questions, General. Yes, I still got you, CBS.